sixty thousand uh, dollars as we speak. Um, and in the ideal circumstance, they would be applied uh, to the purchase price for uh, uh, the respective uh, purchases um, at closing. We have uh, been uh, endeavoring to obtain due diligence uh, on the property. I received the appraisal a couple of days ago and I've been in the process of reviewing that. Um, we also uh, are waiting for the environmental assessment of the property. It appears that there will be no recognized environmental conditions that would need any sort of further investigation or remediation, but that is not in hand yet. And this is uh, Thursday, the 28th of October. Um, uh, we do have the, the survey in hand at this point. Um, and of course we have the, uh, the inspection of the house. And then we also have the letter from the County Health Department, uh, what they call the time of sale determination, uh, stating that um, the uh, sale uh, authorization for the sale of the property is denied due to the absence of a septic field. Um, and then also uh, there's an abandoned well or cistern uh, up near the house um, that also would need to be closed um, before they would approve of the sale of the property as is. That just came in last week. Um, so uh, we're close to having all of our due diligence together on this, um, but still have uh, you know the ESA yet to obtain and to review. Um, as I said, I'm still reviewing the appraisal. Um, hopefully the ESA won't have any issues, but you know I always review those and make sure that uh, that we have a clean uh, bill of health from, from our provider on that. Barry, uh, let me interrupt you just a second. Yes, have you gotten any clarity on what they referred to as something coming from across the road from those guys? Uh, not on what that was, but uh, I heard from uh, ASTI Environmental is our provider for that service. And they indicated, I think it was yesterday, that they had received um, uh, a document that they have been seeking from the state uh, department of the environment, great lakes and energy. Um, it's, you know, something came up in some record search that they did is, is what I gather it happened. Um, and so they did a further investigation into that by contacting uh, Eagle and uh, received the documentation that there was nothing of, to be concerned about on the rents property. Good. So whatever it was, I don't know that yet, but they just said, they got the information from Eagle, it's not a problem. So that's why I say ex I expect it to be a, a, a clean ESA, um, but we don't have it in hand yet. Okay. Uh, so um, there's some things to be received, there's some things to be reviewed, there's some things to be worked out um, in terms of the well and septic uh, on the property. Um, and so I yesterday uh, asked our uh, attorney, Mr. Fazio, to contact the estate's attorney and inform them that we would uh, like to request an additional 60 day extension to the inspection period. Uh, in addition, uh, the original uh, close by deadline is December 31 of, the, of this year with a similar uh, optional 30 day extension for SIO to say, you know, we wanna uh, you know, kick it into January of, uh, of 2022, um, and we haven't got to that point yet, but I expect that we would do that um, when we got to there. Um, and so we've also requested an additional 60 day extension of that deadline, currently January 31 of 22. Um, and indicated- Hey okay, Barry, are we yes, talking sir. 30 day extensions or 60 day extensions in either case? Uh, for these, so the original uh, contracts, uh, allowed for 30 day extensions. We've exercised the 30 day inspection um, uh, extension in the, in the, for the purchase, the closing was an additional 30 days from December 31st to January 31st. We've requested now 60 additional days in both cases. In so both the cases. inspection period would go, if they accepted this, uh, through the end of December. And then the close by date would be the end of March. Of 22. So that request was made by Fazio to State Council yesterday afternoon. Uh, he, uh, the State Council, heard uh, the request, said he was going to confer with his um, with his client, obviously, um, and get back to us. 
And uh, in addition, I uh, sent uh, an email to uh, uh, Pam Martin, the uh, personal representative for the estate, Mr. Renz's daughter, um, and listed all the things that we've been doing so far. We've made you know really great progress, um, uh, not only on all the due diligence stuff, but I, I emphasize that um, we've got uh, you know formal commitments from the state and federal uh, grant programs for the easement. Um, and we have recommendations from the uh, Greenbelt Commission and the County uh, Farmland Committee, ALPAC, um, to contribute one third of what remains um, uh, after the state and federal grants. Um, and we don't have that number yet that's uh, based on the appraisal. Um, and of course, we're reducing the um, size of the property from the original 110 acres down to about 101 acres. So that will change those numbers for the state and federal grants and, and the uh, township, uh, city and county contributions as well. Nevertheless, those um, uh, two other local partners um, have recommendations from their committees. And so uh, once we have a, a, a final number, I can go to staff and say, we need $412,000 or whatever it is. And then that will go on the city council agenda for the Green Belt and for the County Parks Commission uh, agenda for the uh, um, uh, County okay. Parks NAP program. Um, so I, I indicated that in my email to Pam um, and that, uh, you know, we're making enormous you know, progress here in a very short period of time with coming up with all the information that we need to do this deal and all of the funding for it. And that's why her attorney will be contacting her and uh, um, uh, informing her of the request through Mr. Fazio of the, uh, uh, the request for 60 day extensions of the inspection period and for the closing deadline. And haven't heard back from either one of them at this point. That was just uh, yesterday afternoon, uh, you know, not even 24 hours ago that, that uh, actually Joe called me at, at sometime after five and said he had spoken to the estate attorney. And then it was yesterday evening that I, I wrote that email to, to Pam. So no response on that yet. Um, and then uh, as Joe and I were talking about this last week, he asked the question, which is why we're all meeting today. That's just sort of all the background for you at this point. Um, so uh, as it stands, uh, the contracts say that at the end of the inspection period, again, that's this coming Monday, we, um, it's basically Fisher cut bait. Um, if uh, we, uh, do not want to proceed, um, then we can notify them um, that we are withdrawing our interest and those two purchase agreements will uh, become uh, ineffective at that point. They will no longer be valid. Um, as it's written right now, um, if we do not make that election to terminate the contracts, then the, uh, the deposits that we have provided become irrevocable. That is, uh, they can still be applied to the purchase prices at closing, um, but if we do not succeed in closing, again, that's you know now with our, you know, the original 30 day extension, January 31st of 22, if we did not close by that time um, and there were no other extensions granted, then they would be able to keep the, the $60,000. And we would just, uh, lose that in essence. Um, so again, we're hoping that there will be uh, understanding of the great progress that we've made and support for granting these additional extensions. Fazio's question was, what if they don't? Do you want to move forward or not? And if you don't, then we can just you know, notify them that we're not moving forward. If we do, there's this potential risk of losing $60,000. And his question to me was, who makes that decision? And I said, we've never been in this position before. I don't know the answer to that. And that's when I contacted Will and said, I think we should have a special meeting of the LPC and have some discussion about this and uh, determine what the course of action would be. Um, since it's uh, township funds, um, I would think that the board of trustees would have to weigh in on that. Um, and since uh, you know, there's no meeting as scheduled, um, that might have to entail yet another special meeting for the Board of Trustees, which I'm sure people don't want to do. Um, but um, that was my thought, but I'm opening that up for a question at this point. So it's, it's you know, how do we feel about 
wanting to proceed given these uh, current circumstances that may change in the next couple of days, but they may not. Um, and if they don't, then do we want to proceed? And if we do, are we willing to risk the money and, and how um, does that, is it in the form of a recommendation to the Board of Trustees to say, we think we should go for it anyway? That's what I don't know and the reason for calling the meeting. Um, Barry, I'm curious if the attorney for the family, the estate, wanted to, should we say, play hardball and still intend to go ahead with the sale but not grant the extension, thus ensuring they tuck $60,000 into their pockets no matter what, um, is that a likely scenario, do you think? Is that, is that ethical for an attorney to take that position? Um, we have attorneys it, here who can maybe have an opinion too. <laughs> it is a possible scenario, you know that that could be, you know, the estate's response, you know, relayed through their attorney that we have a contract and you guys get to choose whether you want to go through with it or not. That is one. That was one very possible outcome, and it is what it says in the contract. So I guess in that sense, it is ethical. We agreed to it. There, there is a problem with the house though, right? In the health department saying that the that property can't be sold as is, right? That's the estate's problem. Well, then, that, that's correct because uh, in the uh, purchase agreement that we have, um, it states that under uh, the section called seller's representations, uh, there are no uncorrected violations of any building codes and regulations, health codes or zoning ordinances affecting the property. Well, their lack of a septic field and the, the open cistern uh, on the property um, is a violation of the health code as, as evidenced by the letter that, we, that they uh, received and forwarded to us from the county health department indicating that those things were um, insufficient. So yes, that needs to be addressed. Um, and I did some research and had a conversation with the county health department staff person a couple of days ago um, and got some uh, information about how that can be handled. Um, but that's something that we still need to discuss and finalize with the estate. Now, can that be done in the next 48 hours before our inspection period deadline as it currently is constituted closes? Maybe. Um, but that's something that they, you know, we have to work out with them. How, how are we going to handle that? You know, they could choose to, install a new septic field at their cost. Um, but there are other mechanisms permitted by County Health. Um, and basically you uh, uh, apply for, um, uh, what do they call it? Uh, a permit of some sort. Um, uh, do, 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 a replacement permit, um, which essentially means that they would hire a, um, a contractor uh, to come out and you know dig holes, um, uh, ideally within the three-acre building envelope that we've identified uh, on the survey at this point, and um, in the presence of a county sanitarian, uh, have them say that one's got sand, that one doesn't, that one does, and to map that out and say here are places that are approved septic fields for the future, um, and then there is a. Um, uh, amount of money that is put into escrow uh, for the construction of that future field um, at some future time. And uh, when that occurs, then the, the uh, estate would pay for that. Um, so. Um, but arguably it's in, in both, it's, it's in, in our interest, the township's interest and the estate's interest to extend. A bit. The question is whether they will or not. Correct. Okay. Correct. I, I think that's actually absolutely true, uh, Liz, is that it is in both parties' interest to extend. And uh, I'm hopeful that will be the case, but the question before y'all is yeah. what if they don't? Yeah. Is it possible that the crane that was observed on or near the property today, or when was it that you saw it? It was about four hours ago. And it I'm wondering if it is exactly what you're talking about for the soil tests. 
Well, that would be so, quick action in these day of supply chain problems. <laughs> so I've, I, I've, I've seen no indication of that. Um, I would think that um, the I, state would notify. I almost that. that. I took a picture. Let me look at it. Very. OHM was seeking permission to have the northern 10 acres have soil borings done on that part of the property. I'm wondering whether that might be what's going on because they wanted to do it either late last week or early this week as part of their due diligence. Lisa, Jacqueline was just saying that the township's engineers, OHM, um, had sought and gained access to the north part of the property to do some soil borings for the the potential future fire station out there. So that may have been what you- Oh, saw. and it was I've at 10.06. I've had no indication um, that uh, the estate is um, endeavoring to uh, uh, dig for other septic fields in the vicinity of the of the house. There's been no emails about that. And you know the, the communication is largely between Basio and the estate attorney, but I, I get copied on a lot of emails, maybe all of them. Um, and so it, I'm, I'm party to it. Um, Where's Fazio's office? Uh, 101 North Main, Ann Arbor, Michigan. Northwest corner of Maine and Huron. The large brick building. I wonder if it's oh, worth showing up. Barry, I wonder if I could just float the question. I mean, you know, we've all expressed a strong commitment to this property. And, and I know that the, the Wrens Trust has, has already given us a discount over their appraisal of the market value. So, you know, they might feel like they've already made concessions. But I guess, you know, on the one hand, like, is there anything that would really make us think, no, we don't want to pursue it? And and if not, as we're looking at the possible risk of 60,000 in deposits, is there any way to think about, is there in, an, any other incentive we could offer them to encourage them to give us that extension? And if not, is there any way we can meet a January 31st closing, given that we're still processing the due diligence? So three yeah. questions. Good, good, good questions. Um, so it's already... Uh, pretty tight um, and would be very challenging uh, to have that closing occur by January 31. Um, so the process is for us that once we have all the due diligence in hand um, and everything's been satisfied, that is there's no recognized environmental conditions in the uh, phase one ESA um, and there aren't any uh, title issues and, and so forth. Uh, if some of the, all that stuff is, is in good shape, then I ship that all off to our local partners and, and the easement language and the uh, baseline report. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that goes into that. Um, and then that uh, our local partners uh, have uh, theoretically up to 60 days to review um, whatever I provide to them. And sometimes they act within that 60 days and sometimes they don't. Um, so if that was done Monday, say, that's the end of December. And then once they all sign off on it, then, uh, and including us, you know, they, if they make comments, we have to say, yes, that looks good. And if there's anything that, I don't think is gonna be the case, but if there's changes to the easement, for example, um, then the federal program would also have to sign off on that. Um, and then all that stuff gets shipped to the federal program for their final review and approval. And that could take another 60 days. Um, so, you know, can we compress that down and get it all done in 90 days? Maybe. It'd be tough. Um, so we would really benefit from having that additional 60-day extension. I think we can get it all done by then, you know, by the end of March. Um, but as it stands right now, pretty tough. There were a couple of things um, in the purchase agreement that Fazio noted um, that uh, he thought... Um, uh, the estate might request as a change in exchange for the extension. Uh, one of them is uh, some sort of relief uh, on this uh, violation of the health code regarding the septic field and, and well. Now, I'm not sure they can do that, um, but that was one thing he thought 
if they could get away with not having to cover the cost of putting, you know, if there's no sand out there, um, it could be a fifty thousand uh, dollar cost associated with that, and they actually um, you have to put one and a half times the amount uh, expected uh, for the cost of the installation into escrow, so it could be seventy five thousand um, yeah, dollars. If they could avoid that, they'd like to do that. Um, so, and there was something else that he said also that in in his review, he's like, I'm a little surprised that we. Um, that they agreed to, to leave that in the in the contract, and so that's something that could happen if they could come back to us and say we're willing to consider your extension, but can we change this or this, and then we'd have to respond to that. But we don't want to offer that to them up front. We want to get their their answer, I guess, first, right? Yeah. For the time being, we've just said, can we have sixty day extensions, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, left with that. And they may respond, you know, affirmatively without any other requests. They may say, we're willing to do that if you do this. They might say no. What do you all think about the um, option of telling the family right away that we cannot, and Jacqueline, um, I'm thinking of you, we can't risk uh, giving up. $60,000 of the people's money, of the township's money, and we need to have a reply on the extension by Monday, or we're backing out because we can't risk the $60,000. Along with the thought that we don't want to back out, but because of all the things you said, Barry, we just don't think it's likely we can close by the end of, the, uh, of January. And so um, we'd like to follow through on this project, but we can't risk the money. I, I, my anticipation that they, is that the estate will respond to the request, you know, by Monday. They know the deadline, you know, as, as well as we do. Uh huh. And if they don't, then we have to decide whether we want to uh, fish or cut bait. I'm new to this and still learning, but from everything I've heard, that the, we don't care about the house, right? We care about the land. So, can we not? worry as much about the septic and the well, or is it because that is a requirement, whether you're going to use it or not? It is a requirement. Whether there you is, use the house or not. There is a structure. Um, it was inhabited. It is theoretically inhabitable. Um, I'm not sure that anybody would inhabit it at this point, um, but you know, there's the water runs, the electricity runs, and you know, the roof is mostly keeping the rain out. Um, so theoretically it's inhabitable. And so the health department requires there to be a, a functional septic field to service it. And that has to be done by closing. Or can it be done anytime? I'm just thinking if the cost is 50,000 to address those issues, I'd rather pay 50,000 later than lose 60,000 and just, you know, move forward and deal with those issues later. It's just sort of a cost of doing business. Yeah. So, um, I, I, my, my current understanding is that that money, if they don't want to build a septic field now, which I could understand them not wanting to do, they'd have to put that money into escrow so that when either the current house is going to be occupied or a new house, um, if you know when somebody buys the property um, and says this house is a teardown but I want to build over here, that that site would be identified and that the funds to create the field would be in escrow from the estate. So I think that happens either way. Unless there's some other negotiation to be done there that I'm not aware of at this point. But you know, we've never done anything like this before. I've never done anything like this before. So I'm, I'm learning as we go here and stuff like that. But that could all be done later, right? I mean, that doesn't need to be done before closing. It could be done later. 
the the construction of the field, my understanding is that it does not have to be done by yeah. closing. Yeah. That's correct. But, but, but the, the money has to be in. The correct. Right. That's right. The funds have to be. Right. So it's almost like a wash then for the seller here in that uh, they can keep maybe keep our money, but they're going to have to pay for a septic field or put a deposit down unless their new buyer, if they're thinking of that, um, decides they're just going to knock the house down, in which case they would get the deposit back from the health department, presumably, right? I don't know. That's a good question. I, I don't know how that would, would work. I, I think they would. Yeah, well, know. if there's a building uh, L, uh, envelope that would indicate future presence of a some kind of home or house. I mean, if we were not the buyer, there wouldn't be a building envelope. It would just be 110 acres of land that a developer would buy. Right. Um, so, so that's what I just, I'm listening to you all, and I'm thinking if we pull out, there, there are are heirs in that group that would be only too happy to sell to a developer. And that's yeah. what worries me. They, you know, some would be fine with that. And I do see also value in the property for the fire station that's valued to the township. Um, so I wonder if that is a reason the township would want to undertake the risk of losing $60,000. And that's one of the things I emphasized in my email with, with Pam is that all the funds have been committed. The, the 300 grand for the, the fire station piece has been committed by the board of trustees and the federal and state grants are committed at this point. And then the other, the other ones are pending, um, just needing a, you know, a dollar figure attached to them. Um, so I want to really emphasize that with her. We've got all the money lined up and we're also working with the American farmland trust, um, to uh, take the fee ownership of the property after the easement's in place. Um, so that's all essentially lined up at this point. And, um, and yeah, we might you know, need another 60 days to close, but, that's, but we've got the funds. Whereas any developer um, that they're gonna work with is gonna say, well, I'll give you a you know, million dollars down now and then I'll pay uh, the rest of it you know, over some period of years. It'll be a while until they see that money, all of that money. And for us, it you know could be the March thirty one of next year. Would it be Do crazy they, as a good faith? Would it be crazy to just say we'll share the cost of the well and septic as a good faith gesture? It's possible. Yeah, again, we've never been through this before, and and so I I'm you know going to lean on Fazio as a you know the experienced real estate attorney and 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 also negotiator for these kinds of deals. I, I think that's a possibility, Lisa. But that's at the present, that's not even on the table is that cost. I mean, that's still the obligation of the sellers here uh, as it stands in the contract. So there's, I guess I'm not understanding how the law really works, but it seems like the, the sale is obstructed by that fact from our perspective, if we wanna play you know, the rules of the township and the health department. So are they really entitled to that money if they haven't fulfilled the terms of the agreement? The right. money we put in deposit. Yeah. Um, by having a violation of the health code, you mean? What, yeah. by, uh, by preventing the sale from closing on the expected date. By. Because, because of the violation. I mean, in, if a way, in a way, they could say, "Well, look, you know, uh, and maybe well, let's let's suppose they really had a different view of this, and they decided that they knew about this problem, and decided they weren't going to do anything about it, knowing that it was going to be a problem in the end. But if they thought they could still keep the money and <laughs> not deal with the problem, um, you know, it it just seems to me that." Uh, it doesn't really work that way for them, but it does work that way for us. I mean, you're doing the due diligence. Your due diligence discovered a serious problem that prevents the sale without uh, cons addressing it with considerable effort and money, at least, if not actual mechanical 
constructive action. And so um, isn't it right that we go to them and say, look, we really want to go ahead with this, but there's this problem. Now, in a sense, that's bluffing. That's really not what it is. And I don't think that's the way we do it. But in terms of the law, in terms of interpretation of the agreement, it'd be terrible if this had to go to some kind of litigation. But we probably should think of what if it did, because I think it may be our will to go ahead with this, even ri with the risk of the money, that we should know maybe the money's really not at risk. Okay. So, Boiling it down, Will, it sounds like your question is, if they have not met their terms of the deal of the contract, which is to, to meet all the public health requirements, then could they actually get the deposit money? Yeah. Well, FASER right. should have a, a clear idea of that. Yes, you should. should did, that, did that come up in your conversation with him, uh, Barry? With Fazio. Yeah. I was, yeah, with Fazio, yeah. Our attorney. I mean, he yeah. identified the problem that existed in the sales agreement and said, this is our leverage in the deal. But did he take it any further to suggest, um, you know, that if uh, they insisted that they were going to keep the money, this could actually be an obstruction to their keeping the money. The money now is in escrow, right? It's not in their hand. They can't grasp it until there's satisfaction on parts of both parties. Uh, yes, either- For exactly uh, this kind of reason, probably, right? Yeah, it, it's being held by absolute title and it'll either be applied to the purchase prices of the easement and fee, um, or theoretically it would be uh, provided to them if we don't close. But that's a very good question. I, I, don't, I don't think Fazio and I talked about that per se. Um, Did we ask for, the, for, for, that, um, for those inspections of the well and the septic by certified letter so that we have a paper trail that if this doesn't happen by such and such a date, um, the money has to remain in escrow, just something to give them a, a deadline by certified letter, it's like you can always say, oh, I didn't see the email or whatever. Yeah. And Barry, um, you mentioned that to, um, uh, I forget the woman's name and the family, the Wren's uh, representative. Did you this septic field um, obstruction possibility? I did not in my email, but the letter from the health department is addressed to her and was forwarded to her attorney who forwarded it to Fazio and me. So she's aware of the issue. Okay. So, yeah. so the question is, is, um, is, is the estate in violation of the purchase and sale agreement because of the um, health department, the, the problems the health department has identified? And uh, I mean, they're, they're, you know, they're not authorized for the sale of the property at this point, but it appears that that can be satisfied Remedied, yeah. Uh -huh. By them putting one and a half times the cost of constructing a new field into escrow somewhere else. So that to be a title company. Uh -huh. Right. But, but is that a Fazio question? A Fazio question um, whether they are um, themselves not entitled to the 60000 because they're in violation of, they, because the terms of the sale are not what they said they were. But uh, but I think that they can satisfy them okay. by putting the money into escrow. Okay, gotcha. That's, that's my current understanding. All right. They, 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 can, they, can, they can satisfy that, that statement that you know, there are no uncorrected violations by putting the money into escrow. Okay. So that they, it, that it can be corrected at some future time. Could it be that they're just not aware of the sense of urgency? and timing by which this needs to be done. I mean, maybe, you know, they're not trying to pull a fast one. They just didn't think it needed to happen so quickly. And it just seems like there's more to be lost by backing out than moving forward. And I'm tempted to have somebody just walk into Fazio's office and say, listen, there's a hard deadline. And um... yeah, that's what I was suggesting. Barry, you think there's any chance we can get Fazio on the uh, 
call here right now? He was not available at this time. I invited him to come, but he's he's not available. So <clears throat> a scenario I've been thinking about as we get to Monday, right? Is that the contract? Is that the due diligence deadline Monday? Correct. And uh, we may, I mean, maybe this will all go away at that point. Maybe we, the extensions have been granted and we're all happy and we're moving forward. And I'm just wondering, maybe today is too early to, to be able to take the temperature of the estate. Uh, you know, I, I'm hope, you know, I'm very optimistic that on Monday we'll have the extensions. They'll be signed by the, by the, uh, uh, the proper people on the other side and we'll, and uh, we'll attach it to the contract and have those extensions. Uh, um, what, what, where are we, if that's the scenario, we wait till Monday and see. Well, I'm, I'm hopeful also. Um, we're just trying to, you know, uh, figure out what to do if, if that doesn't happen. So let, let's say we get to Monday and it's now noon and I'm assuming this is probably the deadline's close of business. Correct. Probably COB. Okay. So um, at that point, um, what would we need to do to, if we've determined that this extension is not going to be granted and that it's not realistic for us to move forward? What do we need to do? I guess that's something we need to decide now because it doesn't, it's not clear to me what, how we would even back out, who, who would give us the authority to, just to say this is done, you know, this, this deal isn't going to happen. Yeah, and that's one of the questions on the table. Uh, right. And given the, the such a short time frame here, um, I don't think that that's possible for the board of trustees to act on. And so, um, you know, is that something that, you know, Fazio and I determine at that point? Um, or, you know, is it with your input from today um, that guides uh, that decision? There has to be some written notice provided to the uh, to the seller indicating whether um, we're proceeding or not. Well, so let's just say that we de we decide we're not proceeding. It's twelve o'clock on Monday. Yeah. What what does that mean? I mean, how do we notify? What's the legal method to say we are not proceeding? Is it assigned? We're not proceeding. Addendum to the contract signed by Barry Lonick and Will Weaver. Is it signed by Will Hathaway? Is it signed by Jacqueline and Will Hathaway? What? It seems like we need to be creative at this point and say, if this is at noon on Monday, if this is, if it's clear that the um, that the extensions aren't going to be granted. It seems like, Barry, what we need to tell you is who to take the addendum to, to uh, let them know that we're backing out. Who's going to sign it? Do we want to back out, though? Do we, why do, I don't want to back out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't well, know. I mean, that, this is, this is, the, uh, this is what <laughs> Barry's asking us. If we get to Monday at noon and we have no extension, do we proceed yes. knowing that we may not be able to meet the contract which is to close by December 31st. If we can't meet that, we lose potentially unless they, I, you know, I think this is a, a good faith. We're looking for them to, to, to say, yes, they want to proceed. If there's no extension, in my mind, that's sending a completely different message. Mm -hmm. Isn't this sixty thousand dollars? What's at, at stake here? We risk losing sixty thousand if we um, decide to go forward um, and don't close, right? Yeah, we'll that's correct. Lose sixty thousand, but of course, the, as Will said, the the um, family is going to have to put in about the same amount to fix the septic field. So that's correct. You know, or a developer. The. the uh, uh, no, it's, it's, you know, yeah, maybe they can work that out. Maybe, you know, a developer would give them the money to do that. You know, maybe, I don't know. But, so, but you know, is it the case that if we, um, well, how shall I say this? Basically, we are willing to put that 60000 at risk 
does that mean the deal is over or can we say, okay, our 60,000 at risk, but we're still going ahead. We still have till the 31st of December to finish the deal, right? Of January. Of, of January. It's so in effect, they're prevented from selling the property or doing anything with it until then. That's and correct. While we can do what we decide to do, uh, so we, we have that that latitude, shall we say, of that time frame uh, to restructure the agreement, to further negotiate an extension. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, mean, so this, I, yeah, I think the, the most critical concern about closing on time seems to be the money from the American Farmland Trust. Is, is that right? Or do you think the county money and the city money are equally obstructed by the bureaucratic inertia that has to decide to, to spend it. State and federal. And the federal, that's right. That's the final one, isn't it? Correct. Yeah, there's, there's you know, the good thing is that we have uh, funding from four different entities contributing toward this. The other side of that, of course, is that they all have to approve mm -hmm. of things. And that just, you know, takes some time. And theoretically, the city and the county ones happen simultaneously. Um, but nevertheless, that's that's uh, you know all those things have to be done. The 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 section on uh, the inspection period states, by the way, that the purchaser shall have the right to extend the inspection period for one period of up to thirty days by providing written notice to seller prior to the expiration of the inspection period. And Fazio did that. The next sentence is. Uh, if purchaser or purchaser's sole discretion is not satisfied with the results of the inspections and other conditions for any reason, purchaser will notify seller in writing before the expiration of the inspection period, after which all sums deposited by purchaser will be returned to purchaser and this agreement will be terminated and of no further force and effect. So, as I said, Fazio did the uh, notice for the original 30-day uh, extension of the inspection period. I would suggest that he's got the standing to do uh, to provide the notice that we're not proceeding if that was something we were going to do. Mm -hmm. And Will's right, though, even if we, even if they say we're not going to grant you an extension of the inspection period right now, and maybe not right now, uh, the closing deadline either, we could still uh, proceed with things. The 60,000 goes at risk at that point, and we can still come back to them at a future time and say, Boy, we just need another few days because the you know the federal program's got all the, the materials and we're just waiting for them to you know sign off on it. So mm -hmm. we're we're that much closer. Um, so that's still an option going forward. That's that's what I want to do. Great. Right yeah, you know, if you think about it, all right, there's sixty thousand dollars, which is a tangible amount, but there's also all the other costs and the time, your time, our time, which you know is valuable too. Um, so it would seem like it's a very parsimonious decision to think that $60,000, which probably we're not going to lose because so far people have been acting in pretty good faith. Uh, you know, my feeling would be we should take the risk, uh, even if uh, the extension's not granted and, and go ahead. But then it's not my $60,000. Well, it is in a sense. I mean, it is our 60000 as taxpayers who are, you know, appointed to be good fiduciaries. Yep. We should pay for it, really? I mean, we're, we should be willing to give it up? Well, um, we should, yeah, that we should accept the risk, I guess, as a way to maybe buffer that, you know, the finality of losing it. Um, we don't know that we're going to be in that situation, but moving forward, in a sense, it's an act of good faith on our part. Uh, the idea that once we say we're not going to do it, I mean, I think it completely changes the negotiation status between the parties. Uh, it's no longer a matter of good faith. They won't agree. We're suddenly faced with uh, deadlines that maybe we can't meet. I mean, it, it gets, I think it goes better if we just accept that risk and they understand that and there should be some concession. Uh, and I think Fazio is smart enough to, you know, extract that. <laughs> yes. I mean, I think looking at the further possible values to the township of the fire station and the water infrastructure, both of which have been for a long time 
indicated as this site really is very good. I mean, I think that maybe also supports taking a little bit of a risk to get this site because from the larger township perspective of the public safety and, and infrastructure needs, it's it's a great site and it's hard to see what other possible substitutes are available in the near future. Yep. So, I mean, again, that's, you know, I take a, a $60,000 investment of public money very seriously. And I also think that we've been working on this. We've been putting in a good, good faith effort. And if we continue to do the best we can, you know, hopefully, yes, it's a risk. Hopefully it's not at this point, a large risk that we will utterly fail to close. Well, just let's just see a uh, little caucus here. Do we have sentiments here that suggest we should not take the risk involved and speak up, please? I think we should. I think we should move forward. Is it unanimous among us? Or do we, can we make a motion? Is that what kind of what you're looking for, Barry? Well, um, well could I just say it is the township's money. So we can't, the, the LPC would have to make a motion to a recommendation right? a recommendation to the township i think and then here is the problem is that you know right now we do not have a bot meeting before the november 1st deadline and at all at this point i think it's very unlikely that we could get quorum for a meeting on such short notice so um we can make a recommendation and perhaps we could submit it in writing um, but the, 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 the board can't actually officially act probably in time for what's needed. So I'll have to, I'll have to make an effort to figure out what we would do with their motion and recommendation. Well, I wonder, sure. uh, Mary, what if we don't make a recommendation, but the consensus that we've just established here is that, you know, as far as we're concerned, we should go ahead. Uh, if we make a recommendation, put it in writing in the form of a motion, which becomes a public uh, document in a sense, does that weaken our bargaining position in reaching for an extension? To have a motion, you're asking. Yeah. yeah. If yeah, if we make some statement of our willingness to go ahead and put the deposit at risk. Yeah. If if a, uh, I mean, why are we just. Uh, Thinking about willing being uh, willing to convene again on Monday after we have a reply, because uh, we will know something important. But in either case, we might want to do the same thing. That's my question. Would we want to go ahead in either case, whatever they decide? Yeah, I think we need Fazio to answer the question about, um, you know, what our leverage is, if we have any, through the legalities of the environmental part of it <clears throat> with the health department. I, don't we? Don't we need to, to know what, um, what our legal standing is with the contract? Barry, I thought I heard you say that that it could be remedied if they put extra money in escrow um, without be, there being any violation, right, of the purchase sale agreement? That's my current understanding, yes. Yeah, and that, that's what I was saying a couple of meetings ago. It happened with uh, another person I knew very well uh, who couldn't afford to put the uh, septic field in himself, but the potential buyer came along and put the money up. I mean, anybody can put the money up, but put it in escrow. And the, the, uh, the borings were in this case, it was backhoe that came out and did the, uh, did found the sand and, you know, that was approved. And then the money one and a half times the cost of the septic field was put up. So, so on their part, they're, they're putting money at risk because they're not using our escrow to do that. That's money they have to come up with as a group of people right. in order to uh, defeat our purchase arrangement 
which maybe they don't have to put up if the whole thing goes through and we complete the sale within the terms of the agreement. So they're, they've got a lot at risk as well in that arrangement. Yep. Could you give us a, um, a motion, like language, if we were to adopt a motion, could you just give us motion, a, a rec, a language for a recommendation to the board? Just throw it out there and see what we think about that. Off the top of my head. Yes. <laughs> sure. Um, that the uh, uh, LPC recommends to the Board of Trustees uh, that if the Renz estate um, denies the request to extend the current uh, deadlines for the end of the inspection period and for closing. Okay. As we, Hold on. As, for end of inspection, okay, okay, go ahead. Um, that uh, that Sao Township uh, not uh, exercise its uh, ability to terminate the purchase agreements. Okay. To read read and that so again. And, and instead proceed uh, with the purchases as um, agreed. Yeah. Okay. Can you okay. reread it? Um, so let me read that. Um, and you know, we could tweak the language a little bit, but just see to see how this sits with everybody. Um, this is a motion, possible motion that the um, LPC recommends to the Board of Trustees that if the Renza State um, denies our request, denies um, the request for an extension to extend the current deadlines for the, um, for the end of the inspection period and closing, the Sio Township not exercise its ability to terminate the purchase agreements and instead proceed with the purchase of the Wren's property. So Barry, would you like to adjust that in any way or have you have thoughts on what that sounds like? Yeah. I, I'm just trying to think as a negotiator, if, if I'm Fazio or Barry or whoever's finishing this out, I think that weakens the, our representative's case. I, I think that's giving you know what, what would be the right word it, it's 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 divulging our hand we have the ability on monday to back out i want to see them in good faith to extend the extensions i think it's reasonable i think it's it's uh uh it's it, um i don't know what the right word would be it it's a professional way of going forward uh in a land negotiation Let's wait to see what card they're going to play. I can't see their hand, but they will play a card between now and Monday, close of business. Let's see what card they play. I don't want to like uh, give them, a, you know, well, here, here's an ace. Maybe this will strengthen your hand. This is a negotiation. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. And well, I, and I, I think that can... gives, gives away a point that we have, which is we're willing to stay in the game till Monday and wait for an extension. What we're going to do on Monday, we don't know, but we can meet again. I, I, I just, I, I, we haven't, no one has said anything that convinces me that they're not going to give us an extension. Let me just put it that way. Well, we just don't know. Yeah, it would certainly be prudent, you know, on their behalf, but you know, uh, you know, their attorney uh, played some hardball in, in putting in the the deadlines you know originally stated for the inspection period of October one and the closing of December thirty one. And but we we agreed that you know there could be one thirty day extension. I think that actually we originally had a sixty day extension and then they cut that back to thirty days and, and mm -hmm. we agreed to that. You know, on second thought, I think Hobbs right because if we have this, 
put out something like this, then we are telling them you can have the 60,000. Right. Um, we're going to go ahead with it no matter what. Right. So may, I think we don't want to do that, maybe. But, but I do think that it's useful for us as a group to have that in language that we kind of know where we're going to go if yeah. we have to. I agree. So yeah, no, I, I think um, I'd like to think of this. And thank you, uh, Will, for calling the meeting. I think it was appropriate. But I think we can think of this as making sure that the LPC members, and in the case of Jacqueline, a board of trustee members, is staying um, informed and educated in terms of where we are with this negotiation. And I don't, I mean, I don't think there's been anything easy or easy to understand, you know, from the beginning. So, I mean, what else is new? Here we are, we're, <laughs> we're doing it again. We've got eight different scenarios and we don't know which one will play out, but uh, I appreciate Will and Barry and then the rest of you for coming to a meeting, uh, which we didn't, you know, even know was going to happen until two days ago. So um, I feel informed. I don't feel like we need to make a motion at this time. I do. Um, yeah. I'm hoping that Barry on tomorrow that that they've signed the extension and all of this has been, you know, uh, hand wringing has been for naught. It's it's the close of business on Monday, right? Yes, correct. So there's all day Monday too, and we might not know until you know noon or something like that. They might need the weekend to to uh, get in touch with the family, whatever. But um, I think that we should. Um, agree to convene again, if needed, on Monday and uh, at three o'clock or two o'clock or whatever time. And uh, we, we should have the card in our hand by then. And perhaps uh, Fazio can give us 15 minutes of his time on the same call. I, I, I can find out from him you know, when he might be available Monday afternoon. Um, the the uh, bylaws, by the way, s specify that the special meetings may be held as required uh, at the call of the chair or any four members. Members shall be notified at least 48 hours in advance. It doesn't say, uh, you know, 48 hours within, a, you know, the uh, business week. So theoretically, you can call it now um, and establish it and then just cancel it if it's not needed. Mm -hmm. um, or we can wait until uh, yeah. noon on Saturday. Yeah. Just call it seems, now. Seems like the easiest thing to just call it now and then yeah. cancel if needed. Well, except we don't know about Fazio's availability, which would be a real asset to our understanding of our options. Um, so, Barry, what is your ability to contact him and just work out this kind of a thing, a schedule an appointment? Um, I can call him this afternoon. And then um, establish a time that you could share with us and or share with me, and then I'll put together the necessary uh, agenda and post it with the township. Yes. All right. And I, I you know, like this meeting, uh, I guess it will be an open meeting, so it is important that we get that, you know, meet that qualification. Correct. Uh, Jacqueline, uh, again, I know we're all so vigilant about what we can discuss and what we can't discuss, not in an open meeting format, but can you tell us how aware the Board of Trustees is of the concern that we have about this issue? I am not sure that we focused on the timing fully in our consideration of the property. I, I mean, that was certainly brought up around the 10 acre um, or the nine acre purchase for infrastructure, but I don't know that it was brought up in the context of the deposits um, that were at play. So, um, so in the case of a hypothetical issue of importance with a deadline prior to a meeting of the Board of Trustees, is there a, an accepted mechanism for members of the Board of Trustees to be made aware of a pending circumstance that was timely and 
might require some action on their part? Well, so we would have to call a special meeting and it's covered again, by the same 48 hour notice. Exactly. Yeah. And so the, the problem right now is <laughs> I don't know how we get all these pieces to work because if we honestly don't hear until Monday, uh, what's going to happen, then we would need 48 hours. But by, by the time we had the 48 hour notice, then the time would have passed. So uh, I guess I'm going to need to check with the supervisor and our attorney about how best to proceed on this. Um, I, I'm, again, I haven't done this before. So no, have. Well, we've got an attorney you know, who acts on behalf of the township, and that's Fazio. Well, Fazio is our attorney who acts on behalf of the township for our land deals, but we have a different attorney who advises the township around meeting and notice, you know, all those sort of general issues. And so I guess I'm feeling like this might be a situation where I need to check with him about how the board could proceed in considering an issue like this with a very tight timeline. Uh huh. Well, um, maybe you do that. We uh, see if Fazio can uh, meet with us on Monday, and and Barry can let us know if he has a conversation with Fazio, and there's any new information from that, and uh, if we hear anything from the other side as well. In the meantime, I've got to get off pretty quick here, folks. That's why I'm talking right now. I've got. Um, I've got a doctor appointment I got to get to um, even out here. Uh, but also, I, I think a meeting for me would have to be 2.30 or before. I'm, I'm free. I'll be home on Monday and uh, I'm free all day up until about 2.30, 3 o'clock. Okay. So. Well, we're all here, Will, and you need four. As I understand what you said, Bear, you need four board members to say, yes, we need to have a special, special meeting. So I will, I will make a motion that we have a special meeting, schedule it for 1.30 this coming Monday, which is November 1st, to discuss this further. Good. That's my motion. I second that. All right, any further discussion? All right, I guess we should vote on that motion then. 1.30 meeting on Monday. Yes. Uh, yes. yes. Marty, do you want to say something? No, I want to say yes. <laughs> okay, okay. Bob? Yes. Jacqueline? Yes. Marty? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Tim? Yes. Will? Yes. And I am yes. Good. So I'll call Fazio this afternoon. I'll notify him that we've got a time at 1.30. If that's not available for him, I'll let Will know, and we'll see if we can change that probably something a little bit earlier to accommodate Tim's schedule and to see if he's heard anything from them. He hasn't sent me any email about it, so I'm guessing not, um, but I'll ask him to make a follow-up call tomorrow uh, to the estate attorney. There was one other quick motion that we wanted to consider. Um, taking forward the LPC's very strong recommendation that whatever of that nine and a half acre parcel that the township acquires for infrastructure, whatever of that is not used, be put back under conservation easement, including if any part of that deal falls through and some part of it or all of it is used. I have been advised that the best way for us to do that is to uh, pass a, a motion stating that intent that we then pass on to the board of trustees, asking them to ensure that that gets accounted for. So Barry, you had drafted the language of a motion. And I just wanted to make sure that since I heard that very loud and clear from everybody that we passed a very clear motion to that regard that we can pass along. I'd like to make that motion. Can you, can you read the motion, Barry? I will try. Okay, or do you want to send it to me? I mean, Jacqueline said it really clearly. I just didn't write it down. 
Well, you, Barry had really clear, concise okay. language that he had suggested when we talked about this. Okay, all right. Let me see if I can find it real quick here. Yeah, Barry, I don't remember where we have that. I think it was just in an email. In the last couple of days. I have a lot of emails to you, Jacqueline. Okay, wait, I got it. Uh, a motion to recommend to the Sio Township Board of Trustees that the 9.5 acres of the Wren's property to be purchased for the future site of public services remain in agricultural use until such time that construction of facilities commences, that the impact of construction and operations be limited to as small a footprint as possible, that those areas impacted in construction but not needed for operations be restored to previous conditions to the extent possible, and that the areas restored and not needed for operations be protected from further impacts through conveyance of a conservation easement or other form of board restriction. That's exactly one that I wanted to make. Thank you for. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Do we have a second? Second. I, and right. Liz, Jacqueline. I'll send you that language too. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to say, right. Jacqueline, I think you seconded that. Okay, here, I'm going to go. Hob? Yes. Jacqueline? Yes. Marty? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Tim? Tim, yes. Yes. Will? Yes. Uh, and I'm yes. All right. Let me let me uh, <clears throat> tell you something real quickly <laughs> ago that I had a conversation with a, an area farmer recently just talking about the various ways the Land Preservation Commission is meeting. And this is a young family that uh, would be, you know, interested in the future, uh, possibly of um, acquiring about half of the rents property and possibly even rebuilding that house. And, you know, anyway, there, there is, um, I, it, you know, it's possible attractive proposition for farmers in the area. That's all. Yeah, all right. I agree. Can, meeting, I, can we use this same link on Monday? Uh, probably yes. Yes, it it, it does. Okay, good. Jacqueline, could you send me that language? I just did, Liz. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. All right. Uh, we motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. That was my, um, by Jim. Second by Marty. Okay. Hop. Yes. Jacqueline. Yes. Marty. Yes. Lisa. Yes. And yes. Will. Yes. And Wiseman is yes. Okay. Thank all right. you all. I'll keep you posted. Yeah. Thank Thanks you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. See you Monday. Good to see you. Bye bye. <laughs>